Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. Today, let's talk about something that's super common, but potentially deadly, fatty liver disease. It's quite common, and many doctors mention it as an afterthought, like if you get a gallbladder ultrasound or something, and then they say, oh, we did the ultrasound to look at your gallbladder, we also saw you have fatty liver. Not a big deal, right? If you're lucky, they might even tell you some strategies to improve the fatty liver, but most of the time, it gets ignored. It's so common, we don't put that much emphasis on it. The medical term for this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NAFLD. Isn't that just fun to say, NAFLD? I'm not sure why, it just kind of rolls off the tongue, NAFLD. But in all seriousness, NAFLD is a major global health threat. In the medical community, it's defined by hepatic fat or liver fat accumulation greater than 5% of liver weight. That's not due to excessive alcohol consumption, autoimmune diseases, infectious, or other causes of liver disease. So there's a whole spectrum of NAFLD. It goes from better to worse. NAFLD usually starts out with no symptoms and then the liver that's slowly being replaced by fat. It subsequently progresses to an increase in fat content and then you start getting inflammation. As the inflammation worsens, a condition develops called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, otherwise known as NASH. If this remains untreated, fibrosis will develop, which is scarring of the liver. Up until this point, everything is reversible. As the liver fibrosis continues to worsen, it turns into cirrhosis, which is not reversible. So 25% of patients with NASH advance to cirrhosis within 10 years. The liver has a really hard time functioning adequately when there's cirrhosis. Whenever there's liver cirrhosis, it's a setup for getting liver cancer because it's a chronic inflammation. And the liver cancer is called hepatocellular carcinoma. As the cirrhosis-induced liver dysfunction worsens, some people end up needing liver transplants. Cirrhosis caused by NAFLD is the second leading cause of liver transplantation worldwide, second only to liver failure due to hepatitis C. Some experts predict that NAFLD will soon become the most common cause of liver transplantation. So a pretty serious deal. So how common is NAFLD? Well, it depends on many things. How old you are, where you live, whether you have any other health issues. Obesity is the most important risk factor for NAFLD. Up to 74% of obese individuals have fatty liver. The prevalence of NAFLD increases with age, so the older you are, the higher your chances of having NAFLD. The highest rates of NAFLD are in the Middle East and South America. In North America and Europe, about 25-35% to 35 of the whole population has NAFLD. In Asia, 15-20% to 20 of people are affected. As far as overall health, we know that people who have NAFLD are frequently obese, and they may have diabetes or metabolic syndrome. We know that a phenomenon called insulin resistance is a key trigger of NAFLD. We also know that weight gain in and of itself, regardless of the reason, even a modest amount like three to five kilograms, predicts the development of NAFLD. We also know that people who have NAFLD are at increased risk of cardiovascular or heart disease, type two diabetes, and chronic kidney disease. Lastly, there's been a gene that's been identified that places people at three times greater risk of NAFLD. It's called the PNPLA3 gene. Unfortunately, Hispanics appear to have this genetic change more than the rest of the population, meaning they're unfortunately more likely to develop NAFLD. So how does NAFLD occur in the first place? Well, it's a three-hit hypothesis which explains the theory behind how NAFLD develops. The first hit is steatosis, or the accumulation of fat in our liver cells. Usually this is due to an imbalance in our fat metabolism, oftentimes because we have too many triglycerides, which is a type of cholesterol. This excess fat causes the second hit, which is inflammation. And the third hit is the inability of the liver cells to regenerate or repair themselves. Because NAFLD is a global health threat, it's imperative that we identify it, address it, and treat it right away. It's even better if we can prevent it in the first place. So NAFLD, it's super complicated, and its etiology is multifactorial. Right now, modern medicine has no medications to treat this condition. The only thing we found that helps treat and reverse this condition is lifestyle modification. Before we talk about that, though, let's talk about lifestyle choices that contribute to the development of NAFLD. When it comes to food, the big culprits are processed and high sugar food. These foods have been shown to contribute to the formation of ages, which have been shown to be elevated in NASH patients. 
Don't know what ages are? Check out this video we did on ages and it'll tell you all about them. Added sugars like sucrose, fructose, and high fructose corn syrup are added to many different foods, fruit drinks, sodas, and other beverages. Cola soft drinks, for example, contain caramel coloring, which is rich in ages that increase insulin resistance, inflammation, and then exacerbate liver injury, NASH, and liver fibrosis. So what do I mean by lifestyle modification? You could probably guess what I'm gonna recommend, a healthy diet and physical activity. I may say that with almost every condition, but there's some very, very good data behind intensive lifestyle intervention and reversal of NAFLD. A 2011 review demonstrated that interventions that led to weight reduction and increased physical activity consistently showed reductions in liver fat as well as liver tests. It also improved insulin sensitivity. The study demonstrated that the strongest improvements are seen with a weight reduction of 7 to 10 percent or more. Scientists recommend this weight reduction be achieved by a Mediterranean type diet with a reduction in processed foods. Researchers found something quite interesting when they looked at coffee intake in chronic liver disease. They found that compared to non-coffee drinkers, participants who had two to three cups of coffee a day had a 46% risk reduction in death from chronic liver disease. They then found that those who drank more than four cups per day had a 71% reduction in death from chronic liver disease. That doesn't mean we should all go out and drink more than four cups of coffee per day. That lifestyle choice needs to be made on a case-by-case -case basis, taking many factors into account. So let's summarize some dietary strategies we can employ today to improve NAFLD. Try to use whole grains. Whole grains are complex carbohydrates which have plenty of fiber and other phytonutrients to help combat fatty liver disease. Avoid simple carbohydrates like sugar, white rice, white bread. Work to get your protein from vegetables rather than from animal products. High meat intake, especially processed meats, is associated with impaired insulin sensitivity and with higher rates of NAFLD. Avoid fructose in the form of high fructose corn syrup, fruit juice, soft drinks, and sugary snacks. Really work to increase your fiber intake. Prebiotics from fibers help your gut microbiome, which leads to less inflammation and less insulin resistance. Consider adding a probiotic to your regimen. There's multiple small studies which demonstrate improvement in liver function tests with probiotic supplementation. Avoid excessive alcohol intake, as this will tax the liver even more. Avoid saturated fats, like the fat found in coconut oil, palm oil, red meat, cream, and butter. Saturated fat intake is correlated with an impaired glutathione metabolism, which leads to oxidative stress, which leads to NAFLD production. Try to add some more monounsaturated fats into your diet, like avocados, nuts, small amounts of olive oil. Add some omega-3s to your diet from foods like flaxseed, chia seed, and nuts. Avoid trans fats. These are mostly seen in desserts, cream, or solid fats like bacon grease. Trans fat can increase your risk of liver inflammation. Consider adding coffee to your regimen. Let's take a minute to talk about physical activity and NAFLD. Exercise is one of the cornerstones of NAFLD management. There's a recent review article that demonstrated that exercise, without weight loss even, produced a 20 to 30% relative reduction in liver fat. Where we see the biggest benefits, however, is exercise with weight loss. This can potentially produce a greater than 80% reduction in liver fat. In order to reverse NAFLD, it's sometimes recommended that 7 to 10% of weight be lost. Some studies have even demonstrated reversal of liver fibrosis with greater than 10% weight loss. That's great news. That means if you lose weight, especially if it's linked with healthy eating and exercise, your risk for diabetes and heart disease also goes down. You're treating tons of conditions with one strategy. Interestingly, researchers have made a NASH resolution calculator. It's available at this website. This can be helpful for patients when they're undergoing focused weight loss or intervention in the setting of NASH or NAFLD. So there you have it. We spent some time talking about fatty liver and the entire spectrum of NAFLD. In mainstream medicine, lifestyle change, including dietary habits and physical activity, are and should be the first line of treatment for this disease. Unfortunately, the seriousness of fatty liver and what it can progress to has historically not been emphasized enough in mainstream medicine. So, if your doctor tells you you have fatty liver disease, do not take it lightly, please. Work hard to reverse it, work every day to reverse it. Even if you need help, enroll in an intensive lifestyle change program, your liver will thank you. Well, that's all I have for you today. 
your liver and I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment down below what you thought of the video, what topics you want me to cover in future videos, etc. Until next time, aloha.